All right, class, so this is the explanation video for this empirical formula type problem that we were working on in class today. And this is like the most basic type of empirical formula problem. I think it'll run you through sort of the, the things that you're gonna see, um, the, the strategies that we should use when we're solving these. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is telling us the mass percent. So 40.92% carbon, 4.58% hydrogen by mass. So this is the amount of mass you know, percentage that each one of these atoms is going to consist of. And what we're really looking for is sort of this ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. So the empirical formula, that's really just telling us what's the simplest way that we can tell what the ratio of carbon atoms to hydrogen atoms to oxygen atoms is in this vitamin C molecule. So the hint that we have here, it says it's useful to assume if you have uh, that you have 100 grams of vitamin C. And the reason for that, you'll sort of see, it just simplifies some of the calculations. It gets us going in the right direction. So if we have 40.92 grams of carbon, and again, this 40.92 grams, that's coming from just saying, well, if I assume 100 grams of vitamin C, so this is my assumption, then these percentages, these mass percentages, we can just translate those into a mass for carbon. So if I have 100 grams total, well then I would have 40.92 grams of carbon because it's 49.2% you know, of the total mass. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert these to moles because really what I wanna do is I wanna compare the number of moles of each one of those atoms that I have. So if I wanna do that comparison, first I need to convert grams into moles, so I'm gonna use the molecular mass of carbon, so 12.01 grams per mole, this is just from the periodic table. So my units of grams will cancel, and I'll be left with 3.41 moles of carbon. So in my 100 grams of vitamin C, this is how many moles of carbon I'm gonna have. I can do the same thing for hydrogen, 4.58 grams of hydrogen, times one mole of hydrogen over 1.01 grams. That's gonna leave me with 4.53 moles of hydrogen. So the ratio of hydrogen to carbon, I can already see, you know, I'm gonna have a little bit more hydrogen atoms for every one carbon atom that I have, but we'll figure the rest of that out later. Do the last step here for oxygen, 54.50 grams of oxygen. Multiply that by one mole of oxygen over 16.0 grams. And that's gonna give me 3.41 moles of oxygen atoms. So right away, I can see that my ratio of carbon to oxygen is gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio. I've got the same number of moles, 3.41 moles of carbon, 3.41 moles of oxygen in my 100 grams of vitamin C. So let's just sort of annotate here. This is the number of moles of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in 100 grams of vitamin C. So it doesn't really matter how much we are using, how much vitamin C we're using, really, because we're looking just for the ratio of moles of carbon atoms to moles of hydrogen atoms to moles of oxygen atoms. So now the last step is to take this information and sort of translate that into an empirical formula. Right away, I can see that my ratio of carbon to oxygen is gonna be a one to one ratio, right? So every 3.41 moles of carbon, I'm gonna have 3.41 moles of oxygen. So really the question then is, what's the ratio of carbon to hydrogen? And the easiest way to do this is to calculate the ratio of 4.3 over 3.41. So this equals 1.33. And this ratio here, this is telling me that for every one carbon atoms, I have 1.33 hydrogen atoms. That's what this calculation is really showing us. So we might sort of annotate this as the ratio of, oops, this should be an F, of hydrogen to carbon and then by sort of extension and oxygen because carbon and oxygen will have a one to one ratio. So the way that I would sort of go from here is I say, well, carbon has a one, hydrogen has a 1.33, which obviously cannot really be the case, but we'll get to that in just a second. And oxygen has a one. So this is my proper ratio 
for every one carbon atoms, I'm going to have 1.33 hydrogen atoms. Again, I know this because I calculated that ratio be between my moles of hydrogen and my moles of carbon. And then one oxygen atom. So here the problem is, again, we can't have 1.33 atoms. We can't break those atoms into pieces. So the question then is, how do I multiply this, 1.33, by a whole number, by 2 or by 3 or by 4 or whatever, so that it adds up, essentially, or calculates to a whole number. So I can see if I take all of these numbers and I multiply them by 3, then I'll get C3H4O3. So I maintain the same ratio, 1 to 1.3 to 1, 3 to 4 to 3. It's the same sort of ratio. But now all of these are whole numbers. So this is actually going to be my answer. This is my empirical formula. So that's that for for this problem. All right.